Welcome to Bikini Bottom Radio. Cause no girl ever wants to dance with the fool who went and ripped his pants. Sorry. <laughs> I Ooh. thought you were just Anthony Y. I don't know. You know. Anyway. Welcome hey, back. Hey, Heidi, Heidi, ho there. This is Robert. This is a two-thirds episode. It sure is. Yeah. Uh, Jenny's not here just because, uh, you know, like we said before, we live in different cities, so scheduling just didn't line up. She will be down next weekend, and we will be recording our Christmas Spongetacular and probably a couple extra episodes after yeah. that, right? Yeah, and we will be, yeah, it'll be a surprise, well, not so much of a surprise anymore, but it'll be a non- uh, traditional like it'll be next week right probably it'll come out next monday yeah so a week from so when you're hearing this there will be on christmas eve we will be releasing yeah. right. I, that was actually pretty stoked I, yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah we'll be releasing a christmas sponge tacular uh next monday mm-hmm. um let's see uh oh and then really quickly this is the first time we've recorded since the unfortunate passing of oh, yeah. mr stephen hillenberg yeah that's a such a huge shock to me i I mean, I thought I was a pretty big fan of the show. I didn't even realize he had ALS. I had heard about it. Yeah. But, like, because I think someone posted about it on the SpongeBob subreddit, but mm-hmm. it's just kind of in the back of my mind. Like, yeah. it wasn't talked about a lot. He seemed like a really quiet and awkward dude from everything I've seen about him. Yeah. I was talking to Christine, well, my girlfriend to the audience, but to, you know, Christine. She, we were talking about how Butch Hartman, weird as he is, he's very vocal and like, you know who he is, what he yeah. looks like. I never really even knew what Steven Hillenberg looked like. You have to really kind of search it up. It's not like there's a lot of interviews out there or anything. There isn't. And, like, there there were a couple things I looked up on, like, there, on the official Nick YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. There's, like, an interview with him. I just bought a Blu-ray that had some special features that had, like, an interview with him. Mm-hmm. And the biggest thing that stood out to me was... Uh, on, on If you go on the Bikini Bottom Radio Twitter and you scroll down, I retweeted something from, like, the daytime Emmys or whatever right. uh, of him... Tom Kenny getting an acceptance speech for winning an award for Spongebob. And then Steven Hillenberg comes up. He's like, he's the real man. He's Spongebob. I'm just the voice. And Steven comes up and is most awkward. Like, <laughs> like he like he's like, hey, yeah, it's me. And like he's just this really quiet, soft-spoken guy. He was this weird dude who was a fry cook, a marine biology major. He taught and then just decided when he was in his 30s to yeah. go to Cal Arts. Right. Like, that's such a yeah. weird... Imagine like that weird guy who's like, I'm going to go to college and I'm in my 30s. Yeah, and, like what kind of person that is, and and a very and a just a quiet, soft spoken guy, from what I can tell. It's mm-hmm. a it's a tragedy. It didn't really hit me even until like a couple days after. I was just like, it kept sitting with me, and I kept seeing like people posting stuff. And I'm like, wow, this is really it's happening. This is really bumming me out. Yeah, bumming me out. And it just I don't know. Like it also was just the fact that he was so young. Like I knew he was only like fifty something. At yeah, kids, and it, it didn't even. Like, oh, that's going to be when I'm way older than I'm going to be reading that news or something, you know? It's, and it's just one of those celebrity deaths that you read and it's like, wow, that hit me way harder than it was. Because you don't even think about it. Like, no. he's he wasn't has been involved in SpongeBob for like 10 oh, plus years yeah, at this point. Yeah. I, I mean, actually, I think he did come on the last couple of years. He was back as a showrunner or some oh, cool. kind of executive. No, not showrunner, like executive producer. Uh-huh. But yeah, ultimately, it's like but the, he didn't really think about him. But the dude he was, shaped our childhood regardless. Yeah. yeah, like it was, yeah, it was such a like such a surprise um yeah and so off yeah. that depressing we note. we want to say thank you mr hillenberg for all the fun times under the sea go look up stephen hillenberg tribute on youtube there was like a little one minute ad mm-hmm. that ran on did you see that mm-hmm. yeah. it's really it's just cut together scenes from the it's first really well. few seasons and i'm just like why they're singing fun this isn't okay i <laughs> There's a trend in all these new movies that are coming out with like a somber version of like a pop song in yeah. the trailer. We needed like a somber, yeah, fun, yeah, who do stuff together. like Mad World, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but with but with fun, the fun song. Oof. Um, anyway, but yeah, uh, so not to like trivialize it, but yeah, we have to move past it. Uh, thanks, Mr. Hillenberg, and yeah, yeah thank you so, so much. We this, uh, this episode is is about ripped pants. Um, when I ripped. My pants. So yeah, Rip Pants. Uh, we just watched it. I also watched it last night or the night before and took some notes. Mm-hmm. Um, first appearance of Goo Lagoon, which is just a stinky mud puddle. Yeah, I, 
I have W2F, WTF as Goo Lagoon in my notes. It, I mean, the, it's just like tar. Right? The Jacques Cousteau, Tom Kenny voice is, yeah, it's like a, it's a stinky mud puddle. That's what he calls it. I don't That's know gross. what else to... It's something heavier than water. Have you seen those videos of like rivers under the ocean? They're like... What? No. It's like, sulf- it's like sulfuric water or some kind of something's in the water that makes it heavier than the water. Uh-huh. So there's there's one particular video is on like, I love science. Mm-hmm. And it, it shows that and basically just this like cloud of like sulfury gas is on the ocean floor and you just see like crab legs like sticking out the top like oh anything that goes down there terrifying just dies uh Goo lagoon is not like that what <laughs> i was about to say well i'm su- i'm not surprising is how he was a marine biologist that maybe there'd be some pro- accuracy there but of if course, they'd yeah. be dead if they were in that if that was actually that um, well they don't he doesn't know how to swim so he, that's a good point he, <laughs> he would have died yeah uh, and they're all on surfboards, so, you know, they're not actually swimming in it. The um, people are swimming in Goo Lagoon. Oh, you're right, yeah. Um, I also have, the, for the, my first note, because it starts off with, with Sandy and, and him on the beach, and he's trying to impress Goofing her. Goofing off, yeah. They're really trying to make them happen in the first half. Like, yeah, I had that too. Like very obviously flirting with her. He's very obviously like trying to impress her, being the funny guy, make her laugh. And right. SpongeBob clearly gets jealous when he's hanging oh, out yeah. with like he, when she's hanging out with Larry. Yeah, he's hold, like he's like holding the pizza, the sand pizza, and they all fall apart. I put Virgin SpongeBob versus Chad Larry. Uh, Stop <laughs> that! SpongeBob is pure, and we do not defile him like that. <laughs> but yeah, actually, uh, let's see. <laughs> also, get, it's what? it's it, I don't know. It's just an interesting thing looking back that they they really were trying to make that a thing. They really were. I'm curious. I'm sure we'll notice when it stops. We'll take we'll make note of it. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, also, I had Larry the Lobster. Like, I feel like he was supposed to be a bigger character. Like, this is a big reveal for Larry. Like, yeah, that almost... first shot is, like, it's Larry and, like, the sun shining down behind yeah. him. Like, but and he's it's... not in a lot of episodes. No, and it's almost, like, it's not that he was going to be the enemy, but that he was going to be, like, just like, like a, a counterpart to, to He's SpongeBob. never mean to SpongeBob. No. He's just like, I'm here, and he's up showing SpongeBob, but not doing it to be mean. Mm-hmm. He's not, like, Bubble Bass or something. No, but he's, like, another device to just, like, pull comedy out of SpongeBob. But, yeah, I, I think because of... I don't even know what made him stop being. Maybe he just didn't do well with the kid. Like I don't know. I didn't really. Maybe like they just little. couldn't. I mean, honestly, they might have just not known what to do with him. Like in the like the, after that one episode, what else do you do? Yeah, it's kind of a one trick thing. He's buff. Pretty baddies rule. <laughs> <laughs> or like, or like he was in the the what was it the uh, Anchor Arms episode? You know, yeah. Like oh, stuff and that's another that first kind of, season episode. Yeah. So but stuff that... like that, it makes sense to bring him in. But everything else, like, what do you? Like, how many, like, bodylifting episodes yeah. <laughs> where you need a strong buff dude are you going to yeah. do? Yeah, I think he was used well enough. He was. Um, um, what also, else just a note on the animation when, like, Spongebob is, like, putting all the sand stuff on his, like, like when he has the Squidward head and stuff. Like, you see the sand, like, falling from... Yeah. I'm like, wow. Like they detail. like Yeah, like, I mean, it was, like, the higher... I, don't, I wouldn't... I wouldn't call it necessarily higher production quality, but there was a lot more effort, yeah. probably because it was a lot more hand-drawn mm-hmm. animation in cells. Do you do you think? And I had a note about this on the note of animation. Do you think they made Sandy look weird on purpose, like like for lack of a better term, like a fish out of water? Because she looks completely different, even on almost animal st- or animation style compared to the other people in some parts. Like she almost, I don't even know. Like I don't even know. How to explain I, it. I'd I have to pull kind of get what you're saying. Yeah, I feel. I don't know, maybe it's just, she even, like, I feel like she's a character model that changes a little bit once the newer season rolls around, so maybe, maybe that's, that's what, what it is. Like, I'm just used to seeing the old, or the newer, you know, more refined version. I feel like she's taller in later episodes, because I saw her yeah. almost one, like, only maybe a head above Spongebob, not even that. And she looks, like, more innocent, like, you know, wider eyes, you know, like, yeah. in this episode than in later episodes where she's sort of, like, the buff, sort of, like, ah, yeah. kind of character. So I got me with them speed with the big old eyes. <laughs> like I don't know what she I don't know what they were trying to do with her, but it, it she just looked a little bit different than everybody else. Yeah. You Maybe know by on purpose cuz like she is the only land mammal down there. Land squirrel. <laughs> it's true. Also, um she still has that plug patch. She does not yet have her acorn patch. Plug patch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like an outlet. Yeah, I don't I again, just character changes probably they were able to you know, it was probably easier to just go like... I'm curious if that even means anything. Those three, like, lines. Like, are they supposed to represent I mean, anything? Or you think, think about they just it. didn't like, know what to do? TVs at that time were very low resolution. Yeah, so was... you might not even have seen it in some scenes because it'd be so blurry. They're like, why focus on the patch? Like, right. it's, it's a CRT television. <laughs> AKA just television yeah, at just, that time. Yeah, and it's just, like, fuzzy. And they just needed something quick. But I guess later on they were like, oh, the, you know, a, an acorn makes sense. Yeah, it does. 
Um, Freaking uh, ants. How many pants? Do you have ants? Yeah, we have, not in my pants, but <laughs> I think we might be getting ants. And it's Christmas time, so we need to be careful because there's going to be a lot of sweets in this house. Lots of sweets. We're recording in my house this time. Yeah, I, I don't think the audio should sound any different. Hopefully. Uh, how many pants does he have? Oh, oh, we should have kept caught. How many times did he rip his pants? So, initially, by accident, when they're playing volleyball, catching the the frisbee, the frisbee uh, uh, when they go to the ice cream stand, he rips it three times when he's at the burger stand. Right. No, does he, he Does he do, rip his pants multiple times when he's at the at ice the cream snack stand? snack shack? Oh, no, no, only once. He's, okay. Yeah. Uh, he's running around. Uh, and then he rips his pants... Surfing, surfing because he pretends cool. to drown. Uh, then he rips his pants off. Yeah, uh, and then during the song, I don't know how many times he rips his pants during the song. I don't even know if he does. He yeah, he does do it. Probably. But he ends the song in underwear. So, so his pants rip off a hundred percent. His underpants do. So he does at least ten times counted, and I don't know how many times he does it during the actual performance song at the end. Future Anthony, I'm sorry, but can you go through and look at it and then insert your voice right here? Thanks, Past Anthony, for making me do this on the day before my last final. Um, The final count was 11 pants rips and one full underwear rip. Uh, That goes for basically one pants rip a minute because it's an 11-minute episode. All right, back to my studying. Thank you, Past Anthony. Uh, Thanks, Anthony. Um, (laughs) All right. uh, What else do I have? Uh, Oh, there's more of that water effect we saw in the last episode. I like that. It's pretty. I, they don't do it as much in later episodes, but I think it works more in these earlier episodes. More of that experimental animation, you know, fusing styles. Same with that weird green screen part. Well, it's not even a green screen when you're animating. It was just like a, with like him over the, over some footage of waves when he's singing, right? Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like just more fusion of styles uh, that so Steven good. Hillenberg loved to do. Rip. Uh, come on. <laughs> R.I.P. My bad. <laughs> Rest in Plankton? ripped my pants oh i didn't even do that's that what on I purpose meant. that's what i meant Oof. anthony <laughs> you you did it i didn't do it on purpose all right you're right my brain went there uh let's see when they get to the um the people lifting weights i just saw that fish the one he's like gold team rules and he like <laughs> he's like people with low constitutions may want to leave i gotta get out of here <laughs> like just that like kind of recurring buff fish that you see in the background yeah, yeah. i you see a bunch of them there um, um I have, uh, skipping ahead to the song, because that's probably one of the best parts of this episode. This is probably, I think, one of the first episodes, if not the first, where, like, music starts becoming a part of the identity of Spongebob, which I think... Because there's so many good songs Exactly. You, you think of Spongebob, you think of, like, the fun song, you think of, like, Sweet Victory, you think of all of that. Um, and, in it, you know, much like Bob's Burgers, where songs are a lot of, a part of that as well. Like, I think it, it sort of carved out a niche that hadn't been done. And they're good songs. Yeah, like... I don't know who... I'm going to oh, pull man, it I up. Wish, I really I, wish Jenny was here. She loves Phineas and Ferb, and Phineas and Ferb is another good show. Every single episode has a song, and they're all really good. Ah, uh, Jenny, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I wish you were here. We'll talk about it when you're here for the Christmas special, because that... Has one of my favorite Christmas songs. Yeah, and just but, yeah. so so many good songs, and it really—I mean, like they put effort into it. It could have easily have just been like a Tom Kenny sing along, but it was like a whole band, and it sounded like a Beach Boys type thing. Yeah, I love it. <sighs> also, real quick, now that Anthony's looking on the wiki, does he rip his pants once or twice in the surfing scene? Because he rips his pants while he's surfing. Are his pants ripped again when he's like, "Because I ripped my pants," oh, or know. is he talking about when he ripped his pants as he was surfing? I don't. The second. This is the first episode where the Beach Boys sing a song in the series. What? This is the Beach Boys? No, it's not. This is the first episode where the Beach Boys sing a song in the series. I mean, it was the 90s. Brian Wilson was probably hopped up on all his meds. Like, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if. It was probably just the Mike Love. I know a lot about the Beach Boys, but uh, yeah, it might just be Mike Love. Is it the Beach Boys? Are they. It is. What? Yeah, man. That is. I'm such a huge Beach Boys fan. I'm surprised you didn't know that. Well, it, I always figured they did a sound alike. Featuring the losers of the beach. Oh, that's literally the... <laughs> losers of the beach of the three fish. He's I was on, like, wow, is that a weird Beach Dot Boys com. cover band? I love it. <laughs> um, anyway, I mean, yeah. It, that Holy is, stuff. That is really interesting. I didn't know that. We'll have to do, do more research on that while I just read my notes. All right. So I'm just jumping back to where they're on the beach. When he's lifting the stick and he's like, hooray, I did it. And he still like sinks in the sand. Like, that's just me. IRL, I'm very weak. 
Yeah, that's, I literally said me at the gym. <laughs> yeah, I don't even go to the gym, man. Uh, there's always been a flower on Sandy's helmet, right? This isn't new. Performed by, voiced by Peter Strauss. Sorry, huh? Peter Strauss, he's not a beach boy. I don't think so. Maybe it says, it says the song's melody borrows heavily from Be True to Your yeah, School. That, oh, that's oh. right. That is the trivia. It's the same. When some loser come at getting it down. See, I even almost just started singing the the, the Rip Pants song. <laughs> Uh, so some other guy. Uh, Letterman swear. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's the exact same melody. Oh, uh, like, okay. That's why they credit them. That's why they credit the Beach they Boys. need to. They yeah. get writing credit. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, um, that would have been really cool if they got the Beach Boys. That added the, the legitimateness. Um, but yeah. anyway, yeah, that, that, I mean, but anyway, regardless, they did pull from really good music and they, they made. So good. It, they just, the song's great. It's catchy. It's a good song. Um, and seeing as how it's the first one, it obviously only gets better. Yeah. I can't wait till we get to Sweet Victory. Oh, so good. That's uh, my one of my favorite episodes. Top five for me. Definitely. Yeah, it's absolutely. not tippy top. Like, they just so... released the HD oh, cut uh, on YouTube. In, in, in memory of yeah. Steven Milberg. Oh, God. So... Not going to like shed a tear. So good. <laughs> just like the weird... I think it's a Raiders game. Like... No, well, yeah, there is one scene. Well, it's got like all the real people, and there is one scene yeah. where it's a Chargers fan and a Raiders yeah. fan <laughs> next to each other. Embracing. Oh, so good. My dad's a Raiders fan, and my mom likes the Chargers. So, like, I... Uh, that hit I'm me. sorry, you grew we'll up get in there. a house of conflict. Oh boy, uh, a conflict of who, which teams suck more. <laughs> Dude, it's true. It's like which which bottom of the barrel <laughs> team you Oof. know loses more. Anyway, um, oh, I also just love how back to my notes. I love yeah. how Sandy's smiling and Larry's unimpressed when SpongeBob is like lifting weights. Like she's just like, oh, look at him. Like yeah. it's like my friend. You're doing amazing, honey. Like yeah. S- Sandy, it's been there from the beginning. Sandy, I always. Like, Sponge, thought Spongebob was cool, even as he was struggling to, like, do this basic thing. Right. Yeah, she's she's not... You don't need the to look cool. It's like, <laughs> be yourself. She's not... Yeah, she's not rude or anything to him. Or, like, you know, Squidward's there for that to make fun of him. Yeah. Sandy's just, like, a supporter. Spongebob gets tiny eyes, I think, when he, like, rips his pants. Yeah. Right? And then, first time we meet the surfer dude, Fish. Oh, <laughs> yeah, his laugh iconic laugh i can't even try oh, yeah there you go wow I, do that? I didn't know i could do I that i can do spongebob's eye closing sound and you can do, do your that. do your eye closing sound there you go that'll That's be some great weird sound. asmr <laughs> stuff sorry but don't don't <laughs> people already hate it when you even drink on podcast just making That's a good wet point. smacking noises <laughs> don't oh boy i have to use like a feather on the mic right is that what it is i don't know i, I don't understand it um spongebob looks at the camera the second when he rips his pants from the something he's like i sure could use a hand he looks at the camera goes yeah like that's another he's looking at the audience oh like, yeah uh, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah when he's like he's like i know what's about to happen yeah and you know what's about to happen like <laughs> it's weird like they're a lot more like looking at the camera fourth wall yeah. things in this first season as a whole yeah we talked about that in the first episode how we were glad episode. that we didn't yeah, I think it was in the pilot or something. Yeah, because he said, in the pilot I look him straight in the eye. And then in the when we, when we meet Sandy, he's like, what's she doing here? He looks at us. Yeah, exactly. And it, I'm I'm really glad they didn't go that Looney Tunes. Because, <laughs> as, as we've talked about, yeah. yes, but like it's weird because they do fourth wall breaking stuff in the future where Squidward's like, why is every minute of my, 11 minutes of my life like full of misery? Like It's like small <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. But it doesn't have to be literally yeah. staring into the camera. Also, uh, there's a fish drinking a martini, or at least what I think is probably a martini, some kind of cocktail when they're at the bar. Mm-hmm. Like, just, just, I'm just putting that out there. There's alcohol. alcohol in the SpongeBob in Bikini Bottom. What is alcohol there? How does it stay in the glass? Is it goo? I don't know. How can we burn a fire if we're underwater? <laughs> fire goes out. Um, let's uh, see, what else? The rest, of, I only got a few notes left. Am I if I just like kind of yeah, go ahead. I, I went through mine. Ant, yeah, Anthony's going through the wiki, so maybe he'll find something once I'm reading. Um, that fish announcer uh, announcing the surfing competition has a super cool shell microphone that I think will be really fun for us to record on. <sighs> like I like honestly, it's not that hard to make a microphone. Like you just like it wouldn't be that hard to like buy like a shell online that's like big enough and just like wire a mic into it a cheap mic but like that's a good point i think it'd be fun for looks if we ever do like a live stream <laughs> oh that also, would be great that 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 guy has hair that fish just has he does. hair it, I mean, like a toupee or something but it has he has hair because he's a he's, he's a, a fish news, and he's a news well I, of course that but i mean he's a newscaster that's probably that's like a the trope um um i really wish i could surf i live in san diego like so many surfers and stuff here but man am i uncoordinated 
<laughs> boy, maybe if I had like gotten my foot in the water, like when I was in middle school or you early high school. You never took surf camp? No. Nah, well, bro. <laughs> nah, bro. I just talk like a surfer because I'm California. California. Like, yeah, I feel like that too because I go visit my family in the East Coast and I don't sure. think I have an accent and they, they're always like, do you sound like a stoner, bro? And I'm like, how? How? I'm yeah. talking like normally. I, I don't like... understand what you're even like talking about, yeah, bro. Bro, like dude, bro. And and then I realized that I was like, doing a bit there. I knew what I was doing, guys. <laughs> but I just so self-conscious about it after that. I'm like, dang, I really do. And I don't, I don't really represent much of Cali culture. Other than no, like just living, living here. here, exactly. You know, I skate every once in a while, but that's it. Yeah, like, you it's skate not... up in like Pacific Beach and stuff. Yeah, but that's it. It's nothing. I don't know. We we're, were bad San Diegans. Yeah, a little bit. I honestly didn't even know like what was in half of the city until I started to drive. Like yeah, right. And stuff. And I was already like when I came back from college and I had a car. I learned about the things to do in San Diego. <laughs> yeah, when I was younger, it was beach, Sea World. And then drive up to LA for Disney. And there's a zoo, also. <laughs> and there's yeah. a zoo. Yeah, and that was in some nebulous place that took exactly. about 20 minutes to drive to, and that's all I ever knew. Let's see what else. Uh... Oh, the lifeguard puts his spyglass, like, on his eye, and he's like, hey, a cardboard box. Walk. Like, so that just, that made me go, ooh. Because, like, when he's looking at oh, yeah. SpongeBob, he puts it on his eye, like yeah. his eyeball. <laughs> so I don't know if they didn't want to animate it or they just thought it was a funny joke, but like it made me uncomfortable. That guy was so over dramatic. I love him. That Y face when he's going, yeah. Why? Like I have that it's like that's so silly. Plus when he finally like, he's like Because I, I ripped a, my pants. He's like, I need a tailor. And it's from the light turning yeah, the off little in the light background. switch. <laughs> and then that's a meme right there. The the, the looking disappointed like are you serious yeah. face? It's so good. It's also so awkward when that happens. <laughs> And there's a a rip transition when he goes from being on the beach to in like a, a beach changing room, right? He's in like a one of those like old changing tents that you don't see at the beach anymore. Were those even a thing? Yeah, I mean like probably an old timey Huh. I would imagine it looks old timey. I, I never that's thought the that... kind of thing that they would have when they wore like one piece like cotton bathing suits. That makes sense. Yeah, I never even thought that's what that was. I, I just you know, as this cartoon I was like, he's in that thing. Yeah. I don't even know. Yeah, that it's makes sense. It's not a bathroom. Like, no, it's, it's just really just a tent in the middle. Um, at this the, One of the trivia parts on the wiki makes kind of a lot of sense. It says, this is the episode marks the debut for most of the extra, and then they call them bikini bottomites, which it makes sense. Like we talked about yeah, with yeah. The, the surfer guy, you see a lot of background characters. A that lot are the of fish. Same. That I was like, oh yeah, like I actually did notice that. I was like, wow, there's a lot of fish I recognize mm-hmm. here, like just because they're crowd scenes. Yeah, and I... I might be wrong, but the fry cook or the guy that was cooking a burger was yeah. he like the same character model as like from the what the... salty spittoon? Yeah, I don't like I maybe don't with just some so. extra tattoo. I don't know. He looked very maybe it's just I watched buff that fish episode memes. recently, so I don't think so. Okay, maybe just buff fish. That's what I thought of. I love it. Also, <laughs> when SpongeBob's going think like when he's like thinking of like what to do in the train, is that a meme? I have that down as a meme in my notes, but I don't know if it is. it's. Well, it's that same face I think is used in the episode where he's trying to write that paper. Maybe. You know, the the episode where he's like, that's all he can get. Hmm. You know what Maybe. I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. obviously. Where he's like, nah, and he's putting the pen up to his face. Yeah, but for yeah. some reason I have that as, it struck me as, a, I must have I seen think it, it might some, be a meme. like not a, a well-circulated one, but I've definitely seen it used in something. M- most frames in SpongeBob are memes at this <laughs> point. Uh, the sea tumbleweed is funny, just the coral. Uh, again, I have that. He's like, he'll, she'd rather hang out with Larry. If, like, he's got a crush on her. It's weird. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, the pants talk, which is funny. What's the worst you've ever been sunburned? Oh. Because that fish got sunburned on the beach. Like, she's glowing. I felt that. I felt yeah. that when she did that. I'm not a super white guy. I'm pretty tan. I'm Italian. But I, when I was young... Hey. Or, when I was younger, I was super tan. But as I got older and played more video games, I got whiter. And so I think I went to my dad's, and we would go to the beach and stuff. And um, I'm switching the story up. Never mind. I went to Hawaii last year. Got the worst sunburn I ever did because I, I was only there for three days. And I flew there, and I spent my entire time in the water. My you enti- forgot to And I, I, they tell you not to put sunscreen on because it hurts the coral. Oh, just, and and oh, the, the um the, uh, the sea turtles. Yeah, so... I didn't, and I wanted to respect it, but... You're 1% closer to cancer because you saved a few sea turtles. I respect that. It was so bad. I didn't even think it was bad until, like, two days after, and, like, like, my body just... 
peeled. Yeah, like my neck and back. Hey, at least that didn't happen while you were still there, like on the plane. Oh yeah, no, I was like, I was feeling, I was like, that's a little tender, hmm. And it was like leaving marks, and then like a couple You're days like, later, I'm gonna I'm, have a bed of some. I'm like sunscreen. showering, and then everything's. I'm like, ah, oh, why are you like this? <laughs> like this is bad. Why did I do this to myself? Oof. So what about you? Worst I've ever been sunburned is on senior ditch day. Do you remember that? You uh, you kind of were there. Me, I was at Phil's barbecue for uh, a bit. For, during the day at our senior ditch day, I tried to hang out with all the cool kids. I was like, I've got a cooler. I could put drinks in. And that's that's how I got invited. <laughs> I contributed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and like I just badly put on sunscreen. There was actually, I remember there was like a mark in the shape of my hand because I did <laughs> on like my back or something. Like, like reach around like your stomach and like, and like yeah. try and grab your back. That's where I had like a hand print mm. of like sunscreen that got on. And... I just had this really bad sunburn by the time we got to some girl's house afterwards to, like, drink. And then you guys showed up after hanging out at Phil's Barbecue and watching Iron Man, which I probably should have gone to because mm-hmm. that sounded, like, more fun. It was fun. But I was like, guys, check out how badly sunburned I am. And I pulled down, like, whatever, like, shirt I had thrown over and I, like, pulled down to reveal, like, my upper shoulder back mm-hmm. area. And this guy we know, Conrad, yeah. just looks and goes, hmm. Oh, Double dude, over in pain. Yeah. I smack him in the nuts as he's standing right next to me. <laughs> we were seventeen-year-old boys. What do you expect? But... I, I, in my seventeen-year-old mindset, had one of the funniest things happen during Senior Ditch Day. I'm sad you weren't there. Uh, we had we too. were at the uh, beach in Mission Beach or PB or somewhere, um, and it was windy as hell. And I had a frisbee, and we were gonna play frisbee, and um, it's pretty crowded, so we're walking through all the people. And I'm, like, throwing it up in the air, like, you know, just a tiny little bit, maybe not even a foot off the ground, or a foot out of my hand. And um, uh, I was like, wow, it's so windy, look. And I, like, threw it up a little bit higher, and the wind caught it, and just flew up, straight up, and we all just watched it. And this woman, like, two feet away, sat up at the perfect angle of the thing, and it just whacked her right in the head. And it just flew straight right into her head, and she just went right back down. You know what? And I'm glad I wasn't there, because who knows if that would have even happened that way, if I was, like, a person between you or something. It would have hit you in the head somehow. Yeah, that's probably right. And I I, I doubled over crying laughing, and and they had to go pick up the thing because I was done You piece of shit. (laughs) You did this horrible thing and made your friends be the like awkward ones <laughs> to go for it. apologize to her for. It. it was if she'd stayed down, she would have been fine. But it was it would have like gone popped, over her. Yeah, it, but she popped up at the, as it hit her in the head. She That's met it in the hilarious. middle of the air, and I felt bad. I okay. feel bad now. I didn't feel bad at the time. Oof, man. You know, Seventeen. Teenagers are the worst, guys. Even the older teenagers are really the worst. We're just older teenagers. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of. No, I mean, we're in our twenties, but like yeah. we're men. So yeah, we're now that we're men. We can't, oh, we, or can't we can bother do everything. Da, 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 da. So well, oh, I can't wait till we get to the movie. Uh, let's see, you get that guy got sand in his buns. More real water behind SpongeBob as they sing the song. We talked a lot about the song. You see SpongeBob's ass when he rips his pants and his when he rips his pants in his underwear. It's just like that's just his butt. Mm-hmm. Like it's weird to think about for two seconds. Some episodes but it splits in half. It's weird. it's weird. Or when, like, he's the doodle bob, like, he, yeah. like, he's like, hmm? Like, he erases it. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. Um, they all talk in unison. What about you? Like, I just thought that, that was, was, like, a, weird. I, I was thought it was at funny. the camera. I, that was another, like, fourth wall. But I thought it was just a funny that, like, what it's, like, what if we just made it, like, really awkward? It's like, what happened to you? Like, yeah. I just think it's silly. <laughs> um, this SpongeBob song rocks hard. Oh, did we find out who the SpongeBob singing voice was for that that song? There's you some said some random it. guy. There's some random guy. Yeah, um, just a guy. That's my practice stats exam. That's I don't know where it was. Um, um, whatever. Uh, uh, again, for some reason, the wiki has it is the episode premiered on David Hasselhoff's 47th birthday. What? Oh, because this is probably double with the last think, episode we watched. So. <laughs> You're like, what? He had a, he turned 47 twice. I. I... <laughs> Like like I a remember, year in between the last Like, time. I even remembered the birthday <laughs> number like, last time. It just makes me laugh that this Some, somebody okay, went through. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. Someone was editing the Wikipedia page, or the SpongeBob Wikipedia page on David Hasselhoff, because there's definitely one, because he was in the movie. Yeah, right. Saw that it was his birthday, was editing this page, and was like, huh, why does that Dave sound familiar? Clicked in their head, and they put it in the trivia. That for no sense. particular reason whatsoever. Right. <laughs> He's not even remotely related to the show at this point. If you edited this wiki page, 
contact us. We'll have you on the show. Please. We want to know why. You at know Bikini this. Bottom Radio on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Instagram. Not at. Just search Bikini Bottom Radio. You'll find us. Um, Running gags. That's it. I think we have covered a ton of the yeah. episode. Uh, SpongeBob's naked at the end, but that's it. Yeah, he's in his underwear. Also, there's like a glitter effect over them as they're performing at the end. Mm-hmm. Like, just, like, mm-hmm. out-of-focus glitter that they superimpose, and then there's just performing in a stadium. <laughs> like, made out of Yeah, it comes out of nowhere. I love he how... ends, and it's just this, 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 like, screaming crowd. I, I do love that about this episode, all the stuff just randomly, like, forming out of sand. Like, it's so good. Just, it like, is. Pfft. He picks up the guitar, and it's just sand. You know, when he starts singing, he just picks up a sand guitar. It's great. Um, That's where it pants, isn't it? Like that's it. That's the episode. That is. You were saying, yeah. That's it. I. That was a great episode. Classic. Sorry, Tim great. couldn't be here. Um. Actually, she said she didn't mind. She said she doesn't really like this episode because SpongeBob's really annoying in it. Like, if a character is really annoying, I've noticed she doesn't like that. Oh, okay. A lot. Uh huh. Like she didn't like Deadpool two for that reason. She thought the kid that Deadpool was in was <sighs> protecting was like really annoying. And I'm that so kind glad of... he became the villain. He Me too. Yeah. Him. Like he's he was annoying. He was in the mo- like yeah. But um, what are you gonna do? But anyway, uh, I think that was a pretty good episode. I don't even know what we're at. Um, 30 minutes exactly. All hey. right. Um, thank you so much for listening, guys. Mm-hmm. So tune in a week from today, not two weeks from today, as we have our Christmas sponge tacular where we'll be watching the season two episode, Pat, she presents SpongeBob. Yes. Christmas. Yeah. Christmas Who. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be watching, it's a SpongeBob Christmas, a stop motion animated thing from a couple years ago. And. If I can get you guys to listen to it, uh, the SpongeBob Christmas album, I think that's going to be homework for us. Okay. We, we can't like have a listening party that'll no, take too long. I wouldn't. Um, yeah, thank you so much, guys. We'll talk to you soon. We'll see you under the sea. Bye. Bye.